Dr. Chan, you just presented a study on the risk of deep venous thrombosis and pulmonary embolism in patients with AS. What led to the study and what were its main findings? So a number of uh, other inflammatory rheumatic conditions have been implicated with an increased risk of venous thrombosis. So we wanted to see if that was true in ankylosing spondylitis as well. And there hasn't been as much literature on that. There have been a number of hospital record uh, databases, some small cohorts, but ours is the first using a general population database. So we, uh, all, the, all citizens of British Columbia are eligible for uh, health care, uh, public health care in, in uh, Canada. And so we have pretty good administrative data that we could use to analyze the risk of VTE compared to the general population. So we found uh, just over 50% increased risk of VTE, so venous thromboembolism and ankylosing spondylitis, and just over 60% in DVT. Pulmonary embolism was, uh, was higher, but then when we did full adjustment, it lost statistical significance. So it might be a power issue. The number of events of pulmonary embolism were a bit lower. And what are you going to do with your um, conclusions of the study? Is there going to be um, another study or can you just... Yeah, I, I mean, from this study, ideally, we want to refine it, get it published, of course. Uh, some of the comments that were made were maybe considering uh, NSAID use and using an NSAID index to see is there a dose response. All interesting ideas. And uh, going forward, it'd be uh, interesting to see if any of our treatments can adjust this risk as well, both in the cardiovascular side and the thromboembolism side. Um, how important is uh, the interdisciplinary work, especially in, in regards to AS and the risk for thrombosis and things like that? Uh, well, so far this is still you know, fairly preliminary data, so we don't, we're not on the radar of any respirology team. But uh, we you know, collaborate obviously with our uh, statisticians and uh, to be able to produce this kind of data. As a practitioner, what, are there any new treatments or uh, new studies that you partic are particularly interesting in 2017? Uh, well, you know, I think we have a lot of data with TNF inhibitors and now we've got IL-17 inhibitors and it will be interesting to know if the JAK inhibitors are going to be working in AS. Uh, there were some initial studies, I'm not sure whether the companies are going to pursue that as well. Do you think in terms of AS, where will re research take us in the next, say, 10 years? You know, I think the last 10, 20 years was rheumatoid arthritis and the next 10 years is going to be ankylosing spondylitis. And so I think we're going to have more data going forward and, and uh, greater awareness of the risks. Uh, there have been a number of studies showing increased cardiovascular risk and I know a number of groups are, are thinking about trying to see whether our treatments can reduce and, and adjust that risk. Just uh, one more question. The disease burden is usually quite high in um, patients with um, ankylosing spondylitis. Do you think that with uh, new treatments this disease burden can be uh, sufficiently lowered in the coming? I mean definitely we see that in the clinic. I think for a lot of patients uh, the medications we use can sometimes be like magic. You'll see people who have been in a wheelchair for years and then they're, they're walking again. So um, definitely our treatments make a big difference. And how important is the shared decision-making uh, process, especially regarding uh, this disease between practitioners and the patients? You know, I always tell patients, I never want to put you on something you're not comfortable with. And I think there's sometimes some apprehension. And I would say if, if people, the disease burden isn't extremely severe, I never force them or try to persuade them, but uh, most of the time people want to be treated because they've had such terrible disease for so many years and you may know there's often a 10 year delay in diagnosis, so 10 years of severe pain, missing out on things, cutting things out of life, and if there's a treatment option available, I think most patients are pretty, pretty keen to take that. Okay, excellent. Dr. John, thank you very much for your time. My pleasure. Thanks.